the title of my talk today here is is the nanomaterial design. Uh, how this nanomaterial design can enhance the efficiency of uh, dye so, uh, sensitive solar cell. Um, uh, there is many way to uh, to enhance to enhance or to increase the efficiency of this kind of solar cell, but I will focus mainly on these. I will talk about some of them, but I will focus mainly on the, the one uh, belonging to this nanomaterial design. Uh, so uh, my talk will be organized as follow. I will start. Uh, we start by giving um, uh, a short view about how uh, this uh, uh, photovoltaic uh, uh, industry uh, can be uh, a new an, an, an opportunity and uh, and uh, challenge and challenging uh, in the future to replace the fossil energy. Later, I will move to talk about uh, about dye so, so solar cell uh, as promising technology, and I will move later to show you. Uh, how these, the material nanomaterial design can be uh, one of the promising way to enhance the efficiency of this kind of solar cell. And they finish, I will finish my talk by some conclusions. Uh, so here's uh, just some uh, statistical data. Uh, here you can see that uh, we have uh, increase in, uh, this is the data coming from this uh, United States Energy Information Ag uh, Administration uh, which key project or predict uh, the world uh, uh, the world energy uh, needs uh, will, uh, will grow up uh, uh, of about 56 person uh, between uh, 2010 and 2014 and uh, this uh, growing up uh, of our needs in terms of energy uh, or, or our uh, the growing up of uh, our uh, needs in, in, in energy come uh, greatly from uh, this uh, emerging economy from uh, South Africa and, uh, and the Asia. Uh, so here we can see that um, we, are, uh, we have the increasing of all these kind of, uh, of, um, of energy sources, uh, but we have uh, a fast, uh, fast increasing of uh, renewable energy here, uh, which is about 2.5 per year. Uh, so um, now, uh, I uh, will tell you that, uh, for instance, a uh, uh, large part of our uh, support in terms of energy come, comes from uh, fossil energy, which uh, uh, constitutes uh, 80, uh, around 80% 80 of our uh, support. And this renewable energy uh, takes small part in this, in, this, uh, in this support. So we, uh, now uh, there is, a, 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 I mean, all the countries over the world are thinking to increasing this uh, the uh, this part of energy uh, for different reasons, uh, mostly related to uh, uh, to the environment because this fossil energy is no one to damage the environment. So, uh, and uh, the second reason is uh, the fact that our uh, fossil uh, reserve is decreasing versus time, and we have the increasing of the world demand. Here we have some. Uh, um, some curve will show us how these uh, all the kind of renewable energy are increasing. We can see that all of them are increasing uh, very uh, uh, fastly. Here we can see that photovoltaic now uh, becoming a challenging uh, uh, part of this increasing of renewable energy, and uh, and it can be in the future one of the promising way to replace. Um, uh, these fossil energy. Here, which I show you just uh, over the world, how different countries uh, use this uh, renewable energy to support our energy needs. Here, we can see that over the world, the European Union is one of the uh, of the uh, big uh, uh, is one of uh, uh, the the parts of the world who are using uh, these um, uh, these renewable energy in a big part uh, to support their needs. And in the second place, we can see that we have Japan. In third place, we have United States. And in the fourth place, we have China. Now, if you, if you take a look on, on these uh, countries belonging to the, Union, uh, to, to the uh, European Union, we can see that Germany is the, the big country who use uh, most uh, 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 support in energy, uh, which, can, uh, which come from uh, this renewable energy, and, uh, and uh, uh, particularly in photovoltaic uh, one. So, uh, so uh, now I will move to show you how these 
solar uh, the, uh, photovoltaic energy can be outstanding compared to the other energy uh, sources. Uh, one of them is the fact that he's, uh, it is uh, abundant energy on the Earth, and it is renewable and sensible energy, and it is uh, 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 environmentally friendly energy. Uh, this uh, last uh, 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 this uh, um, uh, last argument uh, is the one of uh, the most arguments used actually uh, to look for uh, a new, uh, uh, new uh, uh, friendly uh, energy sources to conserve our environment for the future. Uh, so, uh, so to illustrate more this outstanding of photovoltaic energy, I will make some comparison between our needs and uh, the energy av available on the surface, the sun's energy av available on the surface on, uh, of, of, the, of the Earth. So here we can see uh, that we serve uh, from the sun on the uh, top of our, uh, of our uh, atmosphere 1,400 joules per meter, uh, uh, per meter square per second. And uh, we have half of this energy, which is reflected back to the space, uh, 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 where the rest is absorbed uh, by uh, the Earth, by, by uh, our, uh, 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 absorbed by the, the Earth uh, uh, through the clouds, our ocean, our land mass. And if we divide the uh, this uh, total energy reserved on the atmosphere, we can reserve, we reserve on our Earth surface uh, seven. Uh, 100 joule, uh, joules per meter square per second. So if you compare this available energy on the surface of the Earth uh, to the, uh, 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 our energy uh, needs uh, worldwide, we can observe here that uh, our needs in terms of energy is 3.5, 10 minus uh, tw 10, uh, uh, 20 joules per year. And the amount available on the, on the, on the surface of the Earth is 1.1 10 uh, minus 25 joules, uh, 10, uh, minus 25 joules uh, per year. And we can see here, if you compare the two, uh, the two number, uh, or uh, you can see that uh, we have, uh, we can get from the sun uh, uh, 60,000 uh, times more our needs in terms of energy. So we have abundant, in, in the, uh, abundant in energy on the surface of the Earth. Now the question, how to transform this energy on useful uh, energy for us, uh, like electricity, for example? Uh, there is two ways to do that. The first one is to convert um, uh, photo uh, to, uh, to, to convert sun, uh, sun energy uh, to the electric one, uh, and this uh, process is based on photoelectric uh, effect. And the second one is based on the indirect and direct uh, conversion of the light. Uh, we have first conversion of the light into heat and from heat to electricity. These are the two ways. Uh, later, I will focus more on this uh, photovoltaic uh, uh, effect. And uh, I move to the, um, uh, this following uh, slide. Here we can see that for this uh, photovoltaic technology, uh, we need to use a semiconductor material. Why? Because this semiconductor have this gap and can absorb uh, a given uh, wavelength uh, belonging to this uh, sun spectra. Uh, so using this, uh, this uh, semiconductor material, uh, if this uh, semiconductor is excited by uh, light, we can have excitation of one electron which, which uh, jump from uh, the uh, conduction band, uh, to, uh, from uh, valence band to the conduction band, and then we can produce the electricity. Uh, we can see here that uh, the, the sun spectra is going from UV to uh, near infrared. So we have, if you want to have good efficiency, we have abs to absorb um, big parts of, our, uh, of this wavelength uh, spectra. Uh, so uh, this, from this uh, uh, principle, different uh, limitation overcome. One of them is, is the fact that um, as we have here the, this band gap, we can absorb just only one wavelength. So if we want to absorb more, we have to, uh, to make synthetization. I will talk about it later. Uh, now, uh, one of the limitations is how we can collect light from, uh, from, from the, uh, using our system. 
The second one is how to avoid a combination. As you can see here, we can excite one electrode from uh, valence band to the conduction band, and then we have to uh, avoid the combination uh, of this of this exciton. So, if I summarize these all these uh, limitations, we can say that we have limited absorption wavelength to the uh, physical properties of our semiconductor material. Uh, the second one is how to enhance the collection of light. Uh, the third one is uh, to avoid avoidance of a combination of photogenerated charges. And another one is how these charge can transfer through our uh, semiconductor, uh, semiconductor material. These two uh, limitations are, uh, are, are conflicting uh, limitations because if we increase, uh, we increase uh, 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 if we have to increase this, uh, the, uh, the, the time uh, to, to avoid the, uh, the combination of generated charges, we have to increase the transfer of electron uh, uh, through our uh, uh, semiconductor material. Uh, now, to overcome this limitation, we have to understand how these solar cells work. Uh, before, I would just uh, say uh, some word about uh, the efficiency of different uh, uh, solar cell generation. You can see here that the uh, uh, the uh, the most efficient uh, solar cell are the multi-generation cell. We can uh, uh, we can have some uh, something like uh, 45 around 45 percent of efficiency. Uh, but these technology are still expensive. Uh, now the more popular uh, solar cell is the one uh, uh, is uh, the silicon uh, solar cell, and which have uh, the efficiency of around 20 percent. Uh, other uh, uh, technology uh, of solar cell are emerging. Uh, we can say, we can say, we can, uh, we can um, uh, summarize uh, some of them. We have dye-sensitive solar cell. We have uh, uh, organic cell. We have uh, thin uh, film cell. We have uh, perovskite cell. Uh, so, uh, for instance, uh, these uh, solar technology are the cheaper one, but. Uh, they are the least one in terms of efficiency. So we have to combine these two, uh, the, these two things, to have uh, very efficient technology, but uh, very cheap one, if we want to have uh, uh, mass production of these solar cells. Now, uh, there is uh, two ways to do. One of them is to synthesize, um, to synthesize these uh, solar cells in order to increase their efficiency. Uh, another one is to make this technology cheaper in order to have to make it mass production uh, solar cell. So, uh, if we want to increase uh, the efficiency of this solar cell, we have to know how it works. Okay. So uh, later, we'll uh, focus mainly on this dye-sensitive solar cell and how we can increase the efficiency of this kind of solar cell. This uh, solar cell work as following. I mean, we, we don't excite, excite directly the semiconductor, we excite the dye, uh, and then we have excitation of electron from uh, the high occupied uh, orbital to low inoccupied orbital, and then this electron can, uh, can be injected into a semiconductor and flow to the anode where are they are collected and transferred to the cathode. Uh, from the cathode, we have a, a, a reduction of uh, oxide uh, form of, of electrolytes, and the reduction form can reduce the oxide form, and then we can, uh, uh, we can uh, close our circuit and we can produce electricity here because we have current which can, uh, uh, the electron which can uh, go around uh, this circuit. Um, from, this, uh, 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 from this way of, of working, uh, different uh, limitations arise. One of them uh, is how the electron can be transferred through these uh, nanopar nanoparticles here. Uh, the second one, how to uh, uh, to synthesize this uh, solar uh, this uh, material because uh, most of the material used for this kind of solar cell are titan oxide and zinc oxide, and these uh, semiconductors are known to be large gap uh, semiconductor. So we have to synthesize them uh, to synthesize uh, them uh, to have absorption in in UV uh, range or, uh, or and uh, or and uh, infrared uh, near infrared. Uh, one of the way to do is to synthesize uh, to synthesize this material by dyes. Uh, so dyes will absorb light in, in visible. Uh, 
and then we can extend uh, the absorption of, um, of our material to this EV, uh, to this EV range and uh, small uh, near infrared range. So we can have, uh, so we can have uh, uh, the enhancement of this efficiency uh, by extending the absorption using dye. Most of the dye used are the ritanium complex, uh, which called N3 and N7090. Uh, so from the schematic uh, uh, working of this, uh, uh, of this kind of solar cell, we can uh, summarize a uh, different way to uh, uh, enhance the efficiency of this uh, solar cell. Uh, we can uh, broaden uh, the absorption with length of our material, uh, and uh, we can uh, uh, improve the light scattering uh, or uh, light collection by our uh, material. We can avoid uh, a combination of photogenerated charges. We can improve the charge transfer through our material. Uh, so here I will talk a little bit how can, because these we uh, to enhance the efficiency can, can be combined with uh, 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 sensitive uh, solar cell uh, uh, because here we can use uh, quantum dots and this kind of solar cell is known uh, quantum dot solar cell but we can combine uh, dye sensitive solar cell with the quantum dot solar cell to have a huge uh, uh, absorption one made by uh, the, the low uh, gap uh, semiconductor and uh, uh, another uh, by the dye. So here the principle is similar uh, to that of uh, dye sensitive solar cell. We have absorption of, of uh, energy and uh, of the uh, uh, low uh, band gap uh, semiconductor, which, are, which is coupled to a uh, large uh, band gap semi uh, semiconductor. Uh, here, we, we, when we have the absorption, we can have the excitation of the electron from the valence band to the conduction band, and here we can have uh, uh, injection of the electron from the conduction band of the low uh, band gap semiconductor to the large band uh, gap semiconductor, and we can absorb light uh, from the UV uh, uh, range. Uh, the, the, the condition is only that we must have these uh, band, uh, uh, this conducting band uh, more uh, negative than the, the uh, conducting band of large gap semiconductor. Uh, different quantum dots were used, like uh, cadmium sulfide, arsenic, uh, andium arsenic, and cadmium uh, selenide. So uh, now we, I will move to show you how the design of uh, nanomaterial film. Uh, nanomaterial film can enhance the efficiency of these. Uh, of this solar cell, uh, dye cell, sensitive solar cell. Uh, as I show you, we uh, use nanoparticles. We can use different size of nanoparticles uh, to enhance the, uh, the, the light uh, uh, scene and uh, but the problem if we have uh, the enhancement of light capturing, we reduce the uh, dye's loading. So we have conflicting effect. Uh, so we have to find uh, um, uh, material design which combine uh, the loading, uh, 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 the, the uh, large uh, loading uh, of dyes and uh, la uh, the uh, light scattering inside our material. Uh, so this is the most uh, popular design to enhance this. This Jutang um, published some work in, in, in which we, uh, he showed that for this design he can increase the efficiency around 7.30%. Uh, uh, this is another way to uh, to design material in, uh, in order to enhance the efficiency of these of this uh, solar cell by uh, uh, making a combination of nanoparticles and elongated nanoparticles, which can enhance the electron transport through our film. Uh, here we, uh, we can obtain some efficiency li like uh, eight uh, person. This is some work published by uh, Yang Bei. So in my group, we uh, developed some synthesis way to, uh, uh, to prepare aggregates. We can control very accurately these aggregates from a few nanoparticles aggregate to uh, a few hundred uh, nanoparticles aggregates. Uh, so uh, here I can show you uh, one of the, the technique we, we develop in our uh, group uh, to uh, deposit these nanoparticles. Uh, in, uh, in my group, we are more experts in the uh, nanoparticle uh, nanoparticles synthesis uh, using different wheat chemistry. 
We can control the size, the file, uh, different phase, because these, in the case, for example, of tetaloxide, we can have uh, uh, anatase and retail, and we can control uh, this old phase uh, in preparing our material. So uh, these, uh, uh, once we prepare our material, we can use this centrifugal wheel to deposit this, uh, uh, this non-pulse on the surface. And here I can show you that you can obtain very homogeneous film in terms of thickness and very uh, adherent film on the surface. So we can control the thickness from a uh, few hundred to uh, uh, few uh, ten nanometer to few hundred nan uh, nan uh, micrometer. Sorry, micrometer. Uh, with, uh, uh, and uh, keeping uh, uh, uniform film on the surface in terms of thickness and, and uh, structure. So by controlling the size of these nanoparticles, we can control also the porosity uh, of our film. We can have two scale of porosity, one, uh, mi one micro pores uh, size going from two to 10 nanometers, and one uh, macro pores uh, size going from 100 nanometer to one micrometer. Uh, we can also have uh, sticking of different uh, uh, film with different size of nanoparticles. We can see that here we can have a good addition of different sticking film. Here we can we use this sequential deposition. So by using different size of uh, aggregates, we can control the uh, uh, the uh, crack. Uh, uh, formation in our film. So we can obtain the homogeneous film without scrap, without defects. This by just increasing the, uh, the size of our aggregates. Because normally, uh, for dense film, we have uh, uh, stress relaxation through the formation of cracks, uh, as you can see here. And when we increase the size of our aggregates, we can have relaxation through this aggregate deplacement. So we can, here we can match uh, uh, um, uh, uh, because I, I will tell uh, other things. Here, we, when we increase the size of aggregates, we have less good uh, addition to the, our substrate. So we have to have a, a balance between addition to the substrate and uh, the, the formation of less, of less uh, cracks. And we obtain these uh, condition for uh, the nanoparticles, which size is about, is about, uh, uh, which size is about 100 nanometer. Here, just to show you that, uh, by increasing the, uh, the film thickness, is it yours? Okay. <laughs> uh, so I will show you that by increasing the thickness of our film, we have the appearance of cracks. Now, for dense film, we can avoid the appearance of, uh, of cracks. Why you to do that? How to do that? We can do it by, uh, uh, by once we know uh, the, the, the critical thickness from which we have the appearance of cracks, we can do a uh, sequential deposition of using film with least thick film, uh, uh, in, uh, from which we have the existence of the, or the formation of cracks. So we can have thick film of dense uh, film with very small aggregates uh, using this uh, technique. Just uh, one slide and then move okay. to the okay. <laughs> Uh, here I show you just uh, by using this sequential deposition, we can, uh, um, uh, I, I mean, we can correct some defects formed in the first layer. If you have some example, the first layer would crack, the second layer, we can try to avoid these cracks and have a film with the thick, uh, with, the, uh, with the large thickness and without cracks. Uh, just uh, this is my last uh, slide before uh, giving the conclusions. Uh, here we, we uh, found that we can make a balance between different uh, uh, parameters. One of them to have large uh, dyes loading. This we can have it if we have small particles because with small particles we have large surface. With aggregate we can mix between nanoparticles and large uh, aggregate to collect uh, light by scattering and to have large they loading. Uh, we can uh, have um, material without cracks, without defect, because these cry, this cr uh, cracks uh, reduce the efficiency of this material by disconnecting some piece of our film. Um, so we, uh, for instance, this is the first, uh, I mean, the, the preliminary result obtained from using these uh, this, uh, different techniques, I mean, uh, controlling the aggregates and using this centrifugal technique to make a film, we obtained the efficiency of 4.3%, uh, uh, but we can increase this efficiency in the future. 
So in the conclusion, we can see that the photovoltaic energy source is mature. It's a mature opportunity to support our energy needs. And the hydrothermal and scientifical techniques are cheaper uh, uh, techniques to make very uniform film and very interesting film for photovoltaic application. Uh, I show you that the material design can be a crucial parameter to enhance this efficiency. And we can say that uh, a lot of work is done, but there is still a lot of challenging to make this uh, day sensitive solar cell. I mean, ma in uh, uh, popular uh, sensitive solar cell uh, for mass production. Uh, last slide, just to thank uh, my uh, PhD uh, student involved in, the, in this work and my colleagues invo involved on, uh, on different characterization of our films. And thank you, uh, thank you for your attention.